As our circumnavigation of the UK came to an end at Canary Wharf, it gave us time to reflect on what we'd seen during the diving project. We had completed eight dives that had given us a snapshot of how varied marine communities can be around the country. Our dives in the south and southwest of England included the Isle of Wight, Falmouth, the Scilly Isles and Lundy and were followed by Rathlin Island off the Northern Ireland coast. On the west coast of Scotland, we dived two sites in the wave-sheltered Sea Locks and Sounds and finally dived Bass Rock on the North Sea coast of East Scotland. What we're doing now is reviewing the footage and matching that with data collected during the dives to fill in sea search forms. Sea search is a biological recording scheme that uses volunteer divers to gather data from all around the UK. It's run by the Marine Conservation Society and the data gathered is entered into a national database that can be used to provide scientific information on the distribution and abundance of marine species and the quality and health of their habitats. Let's have a look at the highlights from each of the dive locations, starting with the wreck site we looked at, to the southeast of the Isle of Wight. Do you remember we saw that amazing wreck? Um, we were looking around and looking for conger eels, mm. and you looked in that hole, we found that yeah. really good Beast conger. Face to face, the big away. one. It was really good, wasn't it? <laughs> At the end of the dive, we collected a few specimens and brought them back for the rest of the crew to examine. Our next port of call was Falmouth. We went down the side of a sort of muddy slope into the channel um, in Falmouth, and along the sort of seabed there, we found a beautiful pipefish, really quite a big one. This is, uh, we we're sort of looking at the film of him at the moment, but he stayed very, very quiet as we uh, just came up close. Yeah, I've seen plenty of pipefish before, but this was a particularly big one. Uh, we've seen them in sort of uh, sandy seabeds amongst seaweed, certainly in kelp forests, that sort of place, but this one was really large, wasn't it? It's certainly the biggest pipefish I've ever seen. Uh, pipefish are quite similar to seahorses, if you imagine a skinny seahorse stretched out really long, that's what a pipefish is like. Um, they're fairly common, but you have to look quite hard to find them. They're very good at hiding in amongst the seaweeds as their camouflage is so good. You can see this one just sat there pretending to be a bit of seaweed, hoping we haven't actually seen it. We arrived at the Scilly Isles in thick fog. Our choice of dive sites was limited to shallow water close to shore on sand, but nonetheless interesting. What we saw there instead of kelp was another brown alga called Cystosyra baccata, which is a south and western species, unlike the Laminaria hyperborea, which tends to be more common as you go further north. Remember also that we saw more non-natives down in the southwest as well. So we managed to see the harpoon weed, that non-native species. It's been in the country for at least 40, 50 years, something like that. It's quite widespread down in the southwest these days. Yeah, it's quite nice not having such issues further north. There is other invasive species. Do you think it's from shipping or do you think it's global climate shift that's bringing those species in? Well, a lot of these non-natives have probably got out from areas where there's been a lot of shipping. So it's more than likely they've been on ships' hulls, uh, yacht hulls, or even with aquaculture. Uh, things like sea farms, various sea farms, oyster farms, fish farms, that sort of thing. Conditions had improved by the time we reached Lundy Island. That dive around Lundy, that was really quite special, wasn't it? It was very special. When that cuckoo wrasse turned up, it didn't leave us for virtually the whole dive. It was there all the time. And this particular male here is quite splendid, isn't it? He is, there's such beautiful coloration on them. Yeah, there was a female that turned up later on, um, presumably waiting for this chap to die off and then she'll change sex and turn into them a male, won't she? Now, while we were on Lundy, we did see some quite special south and western species. And we do have some pictures here of the pink sea fans, Unicella, which are characteristic of that area, but don't occur much further north. I think the northern limit is uh, probably Pembrokeshire coastline. But some of these had quite a lot of things overgrowing them, didn't they? Yes, um, they had quite a lot of 
a small spot of cat shark egg cases on them, which I know is mermaids' purses. Um, and I certainly haven't seen them diving up in Scotland where I usually dive. We also saw branching sponges, snake locks and enemies, and finished off the dive in kelp forest. After leaving Lundy, we called in at Liverpool to change crew, take on fuel and provisions, then push north through the Irish Sea to call at Rathlin Island, famous for its upside down lighthouse and the strong tides that rip through the North Channel that separates the Mull of Kintyre on the Scottish mainland from the Northern Ireland coast. The steep boulder slopes were covered in huge numbers of cup corals. Stag's horn briar zone and turfs of hydroids that thrive in the nutrient rich currents. We were also finding red cushion stars that are more common in northern waters. The glacial cut landscape on the west coast of Scotland provided some spectacular scenery above and below water. Now, here we are on a vertical cliff face on the uh, edge of the Sound of Mull. This one here is the Northern Featherstock and also we've got a football sea squirt called Diazona. Both fairly typical of this sort of situation, isn't it? Yes, I see them quite a lot when I'm doing my dives in Scotland. Um, I do love the, the feather star, the Celtic feather star. At 30 metres depth, we were soon near our decompression time limits, even though the darkness beckoned below us. We took the opportunity to dive a completely different habitat type a little further north. Belly deep water, around about 40 metres, just off the coast of Skye. This is a muddy habitat. You can see here there's all sorts of things burrowing in the mud, all these long clawed squat lobsters. And just after this, we found some of those sea pens. Remember the tall sea pens? Yes, and I particularly like the phosphorescent sea pens. Quite spectacular, aren't they? Sometimes these muddy gravel beds get damaged by trawling activities, but the presence of the sea pens and both king scallops and queen scallops suggested that this hasn't happened recently at this location. Our final dive, and perhaps the most spectacular of the voyage, was at Bass Rock on the east coast of Scotland. Home to thousands of gannets, this high energy site is beaten by wave action and swept by strong tides and has very little unoccupied space on its submerged rocky reefs. That one was fantastic. It was somewhere up on the north here we were diving, wasn't it? Yeah, we were on the north wall here. Yeah, these kelp forests are very similar around a lot of the country. Remember the one on Rathlin? Mm, it that was, was lovely. Very similar in quite a lot of respects. Um, personally, I like the uh, sea cliffs, the sheer vertical walls. Um, as we've got on, on the screen here, they can be absolutely covered in dead men's fingers, um, these soft corals there. And there's all sorts of creatures living amongst these dead men's fingers. They're filter feeders. Um, with the, the little polyps you can see making all that fuzzy effect. We did find a lot of lobsters around, right down at the base of the uh, vertical wall. I'm not really sure what they were doing, but they were out and about instead of just being stuck in a burrow. And this is one of the ones that we followed for at least five minutes until it eventually found its, uh, its own little lair. Now, if you look carefully at the video here, you can see this one's got two different claws. Can you see that, left and right? Yeah, the claws are really interesting. You can see the left-hand claw on this lobster is a big, fat, crushing claw, whereas the right-hand claw is much more skinny for cutting things. Um, now lobsters, it can vary which claws which, so you get left and right handed lobsters. I've been diving for at least 30 years now, but more and more often we keep finding macroplastics on the seabed. You know, this is an example from Falmouth here, we found a pot bottle on the bottom. Uh, fortunately we were able to collect it and take it away. You've been seeing quite a lot of uh, macroplastics on this, this uh, 
set of dives, haven't you? Yes, every single dive, if I come across any bits of plastic, I try and clean them up. Rather than disappearing, they disintegrate into smaller and smaller pieces of plastic called microplastics. Um, we're still doing a lot of research um, about how bad microplastics are, but they seem like a really bad thing. And they're being found everywhere from the oceans, the snow, the soil, even the air we breathe is full of microplastics in many cases. So if we can clean up these plastics while they're still big, um, it saves a much bigger issue when they're all tiny and everywhere. It's been a rare privilege to dive such a wide geographic range and diversity of habitats around the UK especially within such a short time frame and from this magnificent tall ship. Although UK waters have localised problems and share issues with the rest of the globe, our waters still offer a fascinating range of marine life that any diver with the right training can observe. Sea search is a great way to turn those observations into meaningful data that can support further scientific study and conservation measures.